took the whole undercarriage out. Yes, they both landed almost simultaneously, but uh, Frampton was the one with the power, and then all of those problems have just been doubled. So look at the way Frampton's going straight up, he's just taking his time. Nothing erratic, controlled, then lets them go there. I mean, he wasn't on the floor, but uh, the, the, the ropes were keeping him up. But that was the right hand and knocked him back onto the ropes and uh, I think if the ropes hadn't been there he probably would have been on the floor then it is at Frampton's mercy here and Frampton lets some more damaging punches go Frampton off his stool already he wants to finish this job and you get the sense he wants to finish it right here Celestine Caballero did it in four can Frampton follow suit Right now, Steve Monitor is fighting for his career, and that career might be about to end. Even that the physical strength of Frampton, Molotov can't cope with it. He's been bullied when he tries to grab hold. Frampton's shrugging him off. Tactics perfect from Frampton. That's a punch. That's a knockdown. John Keane disagrees. He's not touched. I'm sure he's not touched. There was a punch. Now, that was definitely another slip, it's all getting a bit heated in there. I thought his feet slipped, but a punch was certainly thrown, and I think Molitor might just have caught it, but whatever. He is in serious distress. Just can't get away from this. Caught with a little left there as well, backed up against the ropes. Frampton's got him in his sights, and down he goes, and it was inevitable. I think the fight has been knocked out of him here. I don't think he has anything left, I think he knows the job's too big for him. He doesn't have the legs, the stamina, the condition, or the desire to get through this. The charming easy, easy. And there is still so long left, and all Monitor can do is just hold on and hope that this storm, this tempest, is going to blow itself out. Well, we've covered Frampton a few times, I've never seen him in this mood before. This is terrific stuff from him. I think he knew, they all knew, he had to elevate himself to a new level. They knew they had to get onto Molitor early, and they did right from the first bell. Molitor has been looking for somewhere to hide again, he slips. He slipped a few times, but these punches are still certainly starting to wear him down and hurt him as well. You know, Frampton's looking different, class to Molitor here, but no Molitor's coming to the end of a terrific career, but Frampton's different class here. Molitor, just trying to survive, trying to buy some time. But how on earth can he change the flow of this one? What can he do? Try to land a left hand. Frampton saw it coming, blocked it off, and again punished him with a counter. Clever this from Frampton. That was just a survival mode for Molotov. He knows he can't inflict any damage. He just his fighter's pride. He wants to see how long he can hang on in there. But he knows no victory here tonight. And how much more of this does he want? How much more can he take? Oh, just getting through there with a little straight left. The Canadian. That was a good left hand. He landed straight short. Right? And he needed something badly. Another huge round for Frampton. Oh, he's an ice hockey Lads, fan. He's, like he's on ice skates sometimes in there, this fella. Yeah, well, that was it. The, the shot caught him. Above the ear, the glove touched down, I would have called it a knockdown, the punch landed on the ear. So quite fortunate that it wasn't called a knockdown. But uh, Frampton poured on the pressure, kept the punches flowing. And he's just the boss, he's, he's just the bully in there tonight. But again, just taking his time, picking his spots. Nothing erratic, cool head for such a young fighter in such a big fight. Terrific stuff from him. And we see him backed up against the ropes, don't we, Jim? And obviously, it's not where he wants to be, but it's the sheer force of will, really, coming from Frampton that's just pushing him there. There is nowhere else for Steve Molitor to go. He is being bullied and intimidated out of this one. He survived round four. 
much more of this can he take? Well, he looked poor for the first uh, four or five rounds against Booth, then he got himself... He seemed to wake him up and get himself into this, but this is totally different. He's been dominated here. He's been hurt. And Booth was never a big super bantamweight. Frampton is. There he is, backed up again in the neutral corner. Had the sense to get out of there quickly before Frampton could unload. Well, that was a hurtful shot, that really left was. It really was. It didn't look like it did much damage, but it did. It landed cleanly. And the slower Molotov gets, the more powerful these punches are going to be because Frampton's going to start timing them perfectly. And just listen to these, these fans. I was looking around at this crowd during the break between the last round. Everybody was just smiling. They are loving this. They are seeing a real superstar being unveiled in front of them here. You can see Frampton working out how to go about this, how to make sure the punches that he throws are going to find a target. He's taking his time, he's looking, he's, he's fainting with both hands before he decides which one to let go. This is terrific from the young man. Again, Molitor just sliding on those boots. Didn't bring Chris Johnston, his trainer, with him for this fight. Sure. Molitor has used all the tricks he knows just to keep himself in there tonight. No way can he get himself into the fight. Just surviving here. And he must be thinking, surely Frampton is going to slow down. Surely I can just get a foothold in this. Well, so far, no signs at all of the Irishman slowing. Molitor looking to just try and put him in his place. Landing a couple of little shots here and there, but then Frampton just comes straight back at him. I don't think... From what we're seeing so far, the Molotov's got anything like the power he needs to slow Frampton down. A oh, nice left hand again from him. The record has been waiting to see if the, 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 fort, the, the storm would die down a little bit. No signs of it yet. Doing a better job of making Frampton miss here though, but still just dancing around on the ropes. Not really getting anything going himself. The old little left hand here and there. They found just a little bit of composure for a change there at Molotov. And I just bundled to the floor. The soles of his boots just don't look right to me at all. He's been sliding. Hasn't looked steady at all, and it's not all from Frampton's punches. Backed up in the corner again, but he survives another round. on Sky Sports, sponsored by Betfair. There is banter between the teams in practice. Friday morning, different ball game. In the Ryder Cup, no, it's far too important. It will be difficult in America, it always is. The crowd in America are very vocal, very loud, and they want the Ryder Cup back badly. We know that. Ryder Cup, sponsored by Rolex and Visit Scotland, starts Friday, 12.30, Sky Sports 1. Boxing on Sky Sports, sponsored by Betfair. Right hand with, with the left Keep hand, them right? up. Shane McGuigan, and Jerry Story working the Frampton corner. Billy Martin, the Molitor corner. And you can see from those stats which trainer has the greater workload right now. Second vote. Billy Martin, Molitor's trainer, was just saying, you've got to back this kid up. And I'm sure Molitor felt like saying, well, you tell me how. Yeah, I think once again, Molitor's uh, proving to us just what a good pro he is. You no know, sticking in with us. I mean, he knows he's coming towards the end of his career. This is a hard night for him. But he's sticking with it, making the best of it, and actually trying to get himself into the fight. A short right hook earlier from Frampton. Hit the target. Getting through with the left of his own there, Molitor. He's having a little bit of success with those left hands. Well, maybe he's thinking, this kid's gone out too fast, he's going to tire. Maybe that's his hope. Not a bit slippery on those red boots of his, the Canadian. And Frampton right in front of him. Working him, trying to bully him out of it. And Molitor's getting some support and encouragement from his corner there. 
United. Well, at least Molotov's managing to get some punches off. I mean, even that is a bonus when you look at what's taken place up to now. The Frampton, still the boss. Still just picking his time, when to let the shots go. And again he falls down, but is that going to be a rule? Another slip. <laughs> it's crafty stuff from Molitor. He saw that one coming and bought himself some time. But time surely is running out for him. Again, Frampton knows he's hurt and he's just ready to go. See, this is good. Molitor's been giving it a go, so Frampton meets him head on, puts him back in his place, just denting any confidence that he may have been trying to find. And yeah, he pushed the Canadian down. John Keane was absolutely spot on with that. But it does show once again that Frampton is just bullying this man. That was a really solid left hook to the ribs from the Irishman. Molitor took it well. There's blood from somewhere, it's all over the torso of the Canadian, and down he goes again, he's just oh, being yeah, worn down. Down this time. It's all going desperately wrong for Steve Molitor, that cut looks like it's around the other ear, and John Keane says enough is enough, and Carl Frampton, welcome to the big league. What a performance against the man who's had ten world title fights, Carl Frampton made him look like a novice that was special very special indeed well, a couple of times there uh, working on Frampton's face I've called for a little bit more fire in his performance I'm not calling for that tonight that was phenomenal right from the off you could see how fired up he was uh, d during the introductions as soon as the first bell sounded he got on Volator's case did not leave him alone until referee John Keane waved off. Tremendous performance. Heading towards World Class. And we're going to get the performance that what did Molitor have left? We don't know because Carl Frampton didn't give him a chance to show us. Total domination. Terrific performance from young Carl Frampton. An extremely professional, polished job. And there's been all this talk domestically. Who's number one? Is it Rendell Monroe? Is it Scott Quigg? Is it Carl Frampton? Well, Frampton has made a case for being the best of British right now. This is the finish once again, and he just wore him down systematically. Yeah, he slumped to the floor, and when you look at his face when he got back up again, he's not looking back at Frampton, he's looking at the referee. He looked devastated, shattered there, as though he wanted out of there. All the body language suggested that he wants out of there. Proud throw that he is. But John Keane, an experienced referee, he knew it was one-sided all the way, he couldn't get himself into the fight. Had a good look at him, thought what he was doing, then just called off. This, there's uh, Molitor walking away, looking at the floor, showing no signs they wanted to carry on with this. Good call from the referee. Well, there's some of us saying, you know what, we shouldn't get carried away with this because Molitor is clearly past his best. No one would disagree with that. But you have to admire the ruthless efficiency, the sticking to a game plan, and the fact that he just knew exactly what he was doing and set about his business so clinically, Frampton, and a real mature and effective performance from him tonight. A terrific performance. We're in a tough division, and he's a tough little guy. He really is. Well, it brought everyone to their feet. They so enjoyed that, this audience here at the Odyssey Arena. They know what they've seen, the unveiling of a new Irish superstar. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and 21 seconds of round number six, star referee Mr John Keane has stopped the contest in his opinion, Steve Molitor was in no position to continue. Your winner, and he is still the Super Bantamweight Champion of the Power, and still the IBF Intercontinental Super Bantamweight Champion from Belfast, Northern Ireland, Carl the Jack. Carl Frampton, enjoy the moment. 
That was classy, that was efficient. The man from Tigers Bay, Burns Briley in Belfast. And that lot loved every single minute of it. We'll hear from him in a couple of minutes' time on this fantastic fight night and more live action coming your way as we feature former British featherweight champion Martin Lindsay. He's on the way, live, next.